Hello everyone, this is Juan Castillo and welcome to our first episode of, of a new series of podcasts that we will be doing here in the, the universe. As you know, the universe is the first NFT collection artistically customized with real DNA. And the goal of this podcast is basically to promote conversations about decentralized science, scientific art, NFTs and, and blockchain. Today, uh, uh, we have our first guest. We will be talking to an expert in crypto marketing and community growth, Chris Bruno. Chris, how's it going? I think you're around. Very good. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks for being with us. And the pleasure is on the side of the table, believe me. So uh, before we jump into conversation, I will I will introduce you to the audience. Uh, and, and if you want to add something at the end, maybe maybe just put your, your, your comments right there. Okay, so you are an entrepreneur from UK who has been building acquiring and selling companies since 2008. Uh, in 2011, you founded and built your GibraltarTV.com, am I right? An online television company that achieved over 1 million pages views in the first 12 months and was sold in 2015, right? Uh, your experiences with blockchain companies and, and, and regulate markets uh, basically led you to be part of the senior leadership team for the regulated stock and blockchain exchange in Gibraltar in 2018 and 19. And today you are busy with Social Inc. It's a digital marketing agency created by yourself to leverage your expertise in digital marketing and provide fractional CMO services to blockchain and NFT business across the globe. And you're working with big companies and listed companies such as Coincilium. How about that, Chris, for an intro? Am I missing something? I I got to be honest with you with that kind of an intro I'm not going to add anything I can't say it better than that so thank you very much Juan. <laughs> Sounds good. All right so let's so as, as I said you've been building community since 2008. Tell us a bit about that journey and how did you end where you are today? Yeah, when I look back now and think 15 years have nearly gone past since I started, it's scary, but I started all of this when Facebook was only just starting pages, right? So this was a, a whole new sphere of, of opportunities for businesses. I saw what was happening. I wasn't particularly happy in the job that I was working at the time, I won't lie. Uh, sorry if my ex-boss is listening to this, but I didn't particularly like him either. So I decided to leave and I thought, you know what, this internet, this social media, there must be something to it and started playing around with this to try and help companies to do what they could do best online. So it started out uh, very early days. It was beautiful back then. You had organic reach for basically anything you did on the internet, on social media. Mm -hmm. And uh, slowly but surely over, you know, 13 years so far, we've helped companies all over the world do all sorts of crazy, weird and wonderful things from running online events to capturing moments to podcasts to everything you can imagine. And obviously we get into this brilliant world of crypto that never sleeps and that moves way mm. too fast for any of us to keep up with it really but it became even more interesting and fascinating to me so 2017 my first real exposure to helping a company plan and run the marketing for an ico helping them to build up a, a user base for their exchange and, and launch tokens on that it was incredible and that's just kept me inspired i think until basically i realized that i didn't want to work in any other spaces so we've been focused now purely on blockchain companies, blockchain mm. projects. So we're currently working with NFT projects. We're working with AI and data-based projects that are building on blockchain technology. And I think that this Web3 is huge in terms of opportunities, but I really feel that we're lacking still in terms of mm -hmm. marketing 3.0 to catch up. So it's a bit of a shame on that front, but again, really exciting to, uh, to be in this space at this time. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's a great intro from your side. So now, as I said, you are busy in Social Inc. And how, what is Social Inc actually? Can you explain in a few words and how do you add value to the community? Yeah, absolutely. So we're a consultancy. So we started off by purely offering digital marketing services. Mm -hmm. So very much in a standard, more traditional way where we'd have packages where we could help people create content, where we create blog articles, newsletters, community management into monitoring and responding. What we realized a lot of the times when we would work with with projects is that they'd want a fairly cheap package to be able to do things online and make things happen. But invariably, when we'd actually sit down and talk to them and ask them, well, what's the goal here? What are we trying to achieve? What's the actual end result? What's our price point look like? How quickly can we make a sale, for example? Mm -hmm. And nine times out of 10, those things fall down. People think that agencies come in and magically create things and make things happen. Uh, and the reality is the fundamentals, the foundational blocks that really make a difference for businesses. So understanding that market, understanding that target audience, mm -hmm. understanding your price points and how you fit within an industry. And I think that's when we then decided that we were going to do a lot more consultancy work. Mm -hmm. So I've spent most of the last nine months, pretty much spending most of my days 
working with projects rather than servicing them or just selling them a package and making sure that really what we can do is implement the best possible solutions. So we're no longer just an agency whereby we say we can do X and if you want anything else, we don't want to know. What we actually want to do is help people map out what success would look like. And then we'll work with whatever the right solution is to make that happen for our clients. And that can be freelancers, third party agencies that we work with, lots of other various options that I think gives our clients a wider selection to choose from and to find the right suited uh, response for what they need. Sounds great. Sounds like you've been busy lately, right? <laughs> <laughs> There's never a dull moment in this world or this no, industry. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's actually really interesting that you say that because we don't have the magic answer for how, how to do the marketing. How, how do we sell this quickly or how do we put our message out there? This is the magic, the, the key question, right? How, how can we help the community to build this value and, and to, to put across the message right? It's always the... the it, it's the, the challenge, though, that I think everyone's still hunting and i know i am for sure for that magic button i do still see some adverts for these crazy people online that apparently if i just pay them a thousand dollars they'll give me the blueprint to print money whilst i sleep yeah um, <laughs> the reality being i've never seen that work for anybody right yeah. it's hard work building a community it takes effort it takes input it takes hours it means you have to really care and you have to want to engage because people yeah. can smell out that phony kind of rubbish otherwise and yeah. it's a hard thing to, to to get their heads around for a lot of projects, for a lot of companies. There is yeah. no magic source. There is no one thing, one model Absolutely. suits all. Yeah, It's a challenge, right? If you find the magic button, please send it over because we can use that ourselves. Okay. So <laughs> if I find the magic button, we're all rich. This please is going to be fantastic. <laughs> Please send it over. Yeah, absolutely. Share it with us. I believe you answered the next question, but what did you see in this ecosystem that you didn't see somewhere else, right? What made you click and, and dive fully into this one? And, and within the ecosystem, what's your favorite, I would say, field in this space? Or what's your favorite niche? I would say crypto, tokenomics, smart contract, DAOs, NFTs. You know, which one is your favorite and why that one? Now, you see, now I imagine this is the kind of hard question that if somebody with children was asked, who's your favorite child? You can't really answer, can you? It's there's something about technology that I've always loved. So as a kid, I can remember getting my very first ever 486 computer. And okay. basically every six months, I take the screws off the back of it. I say six months, probably every six weeks to the dismay of my parents. I take the back off of it and I'd rip out the sound card and I'd try and buy a new sound card and then I'd try and get that to work. And then everything you did back then, nothing worked. Everything that you fixed caused another problem and yeah. you just carried on in a, in a circle, a vicious circle. So I've always loved a learning process, stuff. right? You're just learning by doing, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But the thing that I loved was the tech side of things and it moved so quickly. And when I look at it now, I talk to my nephew who's 11 and he's running around with an iPhone and he's clicking stuff and he's showing me things. And you think, wow, OK, he's grown up in in just a completely right. different generation. But I've always tried to keep on top of the tech side of things. And when I started to understand more about crypto, what it meant, but what the underlying technology means, that's what really got me interesting. And it's not. I still don't think we found the killer app for blockchain. When we had the app store, there wasn't any real killer apps. In fact, when you look back at some of those initial apps on the app store, it was things like, oh, it would show you like a glass of milk and you could pour the milk out when you turned your phone. It was rubbish. But then suddenly we got things like Uber and then suddenly life changed dramatically and we saw what the impact could actually be. Absolutely. And I think the same is still happening. Blockchain yeah. as an underlying technology has so much potential. It has it reaches into every single aspect of what we call life today. And I think that's what makes it exciting to me in terms of this space. Is there a particular piece of that puzzle yet that I think is the most amazing or the most fascinating to me? Not yet, but I am watching heavily in the NFT space and the gamification side of that, yeah. because I do think there's a lot that will come down the roots of that. And the second side of things is in data. And I think when data suddenly isn't held in one specific location by one specific group, then I think it becomes a very different animal. And I think that has the possibility to change the world, although it's going to be very hard to pull that away from the big four, I think. No, absolutely. I agree with you. I think it is quite hard to, to pick a child. I love this one the most. I think all of them are part of the family. And I think, as you say, technology is amazing. We are at the beginning of this amazing technology and the possibilities are endless. We are just hearing about different directions that we are taking, but I think we are not untapping yet the power of NFTs uh, and, 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 and data, the big data. Actually, we are just shifting uh, centralized data to, to the decentralized data. And this is going to be 
game changers for, for so many industries, not only in industry, but also individuals, right? Ourselves, we're going to be interacting much, much better with everything that we have around us. It's not only about social media, it's about buying groceries or going to concerts or buying a house. Everything's going to be tokenized and everything's going to be an NFT. And I think it's quite interesting. And I know I get your point. I think it's your, you cannot decide, right? This, this, it's all together. It's a... It's just a package. We love the package and we are trying to put it forward, right? Yeah, but I think all of these packages as well, they all actually, even if projects don't realize it yet, but they're all helping each other. And it's a case of education. It's a case of some industries moving faster than others currently. But mm -hmm. all of these little steps, whether it be in DeFi, where people are suddenly go doing yield farming and thinking, what the hell is this all about? And why is this working? And I don't understand it. But then at the same time, whilst people are decentralizing data, other yeah. companies are now looking at this going, hang on a second, how would this impact what we're doing? And like you said, if you look at an NFT as an ownership wrapper in the same way as you don't own your car because you've got the car key, you own yeah. your car because you have a piece of paper that tells you you own the car. If you look at that kind of ownership wrapper, you realize how much more we've still got to go. And I think this is where it's interesting. But I was talking to somebody the other day about tickets for concerts and for sports matches and things like that. And the amount of problems with scalping, using bots to buy these things in the early stages, all of a sudden, by doing these on NFTs, etc., we can tell who's buying them. We can see it on a public chain. We can see if people are trying to buy multiples or owning too many. We can see if people are taking advantage mm -hmm. and buying as many as they can up front with no intentions of going and then mm -hmm. only to actually resell. But not only that, but now actually the organizer, the, the person who's actually doing this can control that element but they can also recoup on that. So suddenly, fine, the scalper might be making money, but actually there's more money being generated back into the person who's actually running the show or running the event or whatever it might be. But I'm still amazed even to this day, I'm going to a, a fairly decent NFT event uh, and I was sent basically an Eventbrite link to be able to sign up to. And you mm -hmm. think to yourself, this is crazy. Why can't I use my MetaMask, get an NFT for this, right. solidify, and there you go, I've got my ticket and proof yeah. I was there. and. All of these things, it's a slow process. And I still think we're very early, not in NFTs, not in mm -hmm. DeFi, not in any of these parts, but in the entire spectrum. We feel yeah. like we've got very far because we've got fancy iPhones and everything else. This technology is brand new and we've got another 10, 15, 20 years ahead of us of watching how this really impacts the world. Absolutely. I think Web3 is a game changer. So now we're talking about Web3 and decentralized. What about science? Have you heard about decentralized science? Do you have any idea around it? So I started learning about the decentralized science and I'll tell everyone here uh, when I met you guys, <laughs> <laughs> that was my eye opening moment. Yeah. It's a really interesting one because the more and more I look around and the more and more time I spend in this space, mm -hmm. the more time I actually realize that everything has the opportunity to be decentralized, how we control the data from whether it be science, whether it be healthcare, whether it eventually be cars, houses, land registries, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. What's interesting about it is the fact that people are now taking that first step that are becoming communities of I'm interested in this decentralized science or decentralized finance or it's just a matter of time before these things get really pulled out and I think yeah. when you talk about science when you talk about data when you talk about AI usually there is a cluster of people that make something happen mm -hmm. it's never usually one person one sat person, at home yeah. on their own it's always usually multiple organizations different institutions different people different communities right yeah. yeah. And then a ca academia and all of these people come together. But suddenly there's a like one organization in the middle that controls something or that gets something out of this. Whereas actually all those people that contribute, mm -hmm. whether it be from directly within those organizations or even from the community and the public, they mm -hmm. can now have a part of that. And I think that's the bit that really a lot of people don't get yet. The power of blockchain, the power of what we can do as a community by decentralizing, etc. Yeah. It's not just about the, the results that we can get out of it. It's also about the share of those results and how that is distributed, which I think becomes a very different story. Absolutely. The collaboration, right? This, this is just getting communities or tribes, you, you may call it like that, all together. And everybody's helping each other, even competitors. That is because everybody is actually trying to develop something new, something big, and everybody's just pushing together. And, and this is the magic of, 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 as you said, the Web3 and blockchain and, and building these communities. You have experience building communities since 2008. So this is, you can see that clearly, right? And, and, and this is something that we are trying to do in, in, in the universe uh, as part of the centralized science process. So as you said, that we pioneer 
the, the science for you, that you just, just found out the, the science of this intelligent side with that. What do you think about that biotechnology and genetics? Do you think are compatible with the, the metaverse and uh, just bringing our our DNA, our genetics, ourselves as humans? What do you think? Do we have a space in the, in the metaverse? I think that it's a, there's a very big shift coming, whether people like it or not, which is a big part of the Web3 world right now wants to be anonymous or pseudo anonymous. They want to have mm -hmm. this fake character, which works very well in a metaverse world where it's digital, it's online. And it's very much similar to how most people use their Instagram, right? You yeah. don't post the pictures of when you're having a bad day and you drop your glass of water and the kids are crying and you're late for work and you miss the bus or whatever else. You post the beautiful moment when the sun sets and oh, I had a gin and tonic. It was lovely. I think the same thing is happening, but there's a transition that's coming, whether people like it or not. Regulators, countries, tax people, everyone, they all want their piece of something that is growing quite exponentially and potentially could get very big before they try and implement and they can't let that happen. Yeah. Yeah. Part of that shift is going to be verification. It's going to be KYC. It's going to be AML. It's going to be all the usual things that we don't always realize that we're doing. But when you set up a bank account, you get asked for proof of address and everything else. So I think that the verification stage is going to be the first step in making mm -hmm. sure that everyone that's in and out and that's operating within these environments is safe to the best of our ability. I think what gets interesting is as more and more people shift to a, this metaverse, and mm -hmm. I've had this conversation a lot with people where people go, oh, but the metaverse isn't where I'm going to spend time. It's like that. Forget about you. How many hours does your kid spend on the, the, the PlayStation, for example? Yeah. Oh, he's engrossed. He's all the time. He's in there. He's playing Minecraft. He's doing this. He's already living in a metaverse. The evolution, it's, right? it's, yeah. yeah, it's as important to him to have the latest Fortnite skin, for example, mm -hmm. as it is to have a new pair of trainers to go to school. Now, yeah. go back to when we were kids, that wasn't the case because there was no online, right? If you were lucky, you had you blew in the cartridge for your Super Nintendo and you were away. Great, happy days. But that's not how they live nowadays. Kids are on servers. Kids are programming their own versions of games in Minecraft, etc. Mm -hmm. So people are already shifting quite dynamically towards that. And the next generation will spend more and more time. As we do that, as AI keeps building and as people are looking now at how they can build better and better AI so that non-playable characters and virtual characters within these worlds online are mm -hmm. actually able to respond and they can suddenly actually get smarter. They can get better as you play against them. Yeah. All of these kind of concepts, which aren't sci-fi anymore, right? It's happening. People are working on this actively to make this happen. I think at that point in time, where does our gap fall between who we were in the physical world and in the biological status and where we actually spend most of our mm -hmm. time and suddenly live in this metaverse? And I think there, there's going to be some interesting connotations for lots of people. I don't think it's a simple transition, but you'll have some people that will love the idea of forever in the history books, as it were, as part of the metaverse and something that will exist. And you'll have some people that will think it's very dangerous, the same way as my grandmother, unfortunately, before she passed away, would never have used her credit card on a website because no, that's dangerous and somebody's going to steal my money. So it's going to be a shift. It's going to be transition. It's going to take a while. But I think as more and more people realize that they already spend a life in a form of metaverse it's usually just on zoom calls and email inboxes currently but they're already media, spending right? yeah. yeah same thing um, but then people will start to move to that and i think there's some really interesting opportunities of what we could do in the future yeah absolutely i, I think the technology is right here i think even in the past if we try to do something i remember nintendo or something trying to connect each other computer or just uh, dialing directly modems to each other to play I don't know, some video games. And nowadays we have the technology and people are already living, as you said. They're just using it. They don't even realize. So the future is going to be similar. It's going to be like we are going to be using X platform or X tool. I'm not going to be living myself in the metaverse. Yeah, but you are already doing in, in, in Indirectly or directly, as you said, your grandma didn't use the, the credit card. Probably my parents are not going to use the wallet. Maybe my kids are not going to use, I'm not going to be using something my kids will. Right? Yeah. And, and, and this is the normal evolution. And, and I think, as you said, the society is already getting into it, not because we are hooked on this, because the, the possibilities and, and, and the advantages that we have there, we don't have it in, in, in many other ways. And, and yeah, this is amazing to see how unveils before us. And I think there is so much to do from the building side, also part from the user side. I think that the society needs to be educated and see the possibility behind and not just, okay, I'm not going to be playing video game because it has so much to do in the real life. It's not about video game, it's about you're gonna have two lives and as you say 
the AI is getting so intense and so real that at some point you won't be able to distinguish who is who. We have already bots crawling the internet uh, in many different ways. What if you go to the metaverse or you try to go to a shop but you don't know who, you, who you're talking to? So this is something that we're trying to, to achieve with the universe. And overall, I would like to, to have your opinion how you feel about what we're trying to, to accomplish here, using genetics into a customized NFT to, to not to have your, your data, but to visually represent you, what you are, your essence, right? Your human essence. I think you're completely right in terms of it's not going to be for everybody. And I think that's something that is actually a good thing, right? When the internet started, newspaper articles are plenty said this thing is never going to take off. It's absolutely useless. People said the same thing about social medias and these companies aren't going to last forever. And Facebook will go the same way as MySpace. And mm -hmm. what's that? Uh, Facebook were crazy to buy WhatsApp for a billion dollars or yeah. all of these things, right? You have these conversations around and every time it's the same thing. People said the same thing about Elon Musk, right? He, you know, electric cars, don't be silly. Today, mm -hmm. GM, yeah. VW, everyone is shifting 90% of their Wi-Fi, strategy. Right? Yeah. yeah, but it's true. And the same thing, SpaceX for, for Elon Musk as well. I'm going to reland a rocket. And NASA said, you're, you're crazy. It took him a few goes and everyone laughed and pointed at a few of them that blew up. And there they are. Now they've got a reusable rocket. Absolutely. These things take time and they take a lot of effort. I think there's always going to be a community that will say yes. And there'll be a community that will say no. Finding the right balance, I think, is where it, it starts to actually play into people's lives. And I think there will come a time, whether people like it or not, and we're already doing it more and more, by your phone, you, you, you have your face ID, which is a form of yep. biometrics, to be able to justify who you are, to be able to make payments through your Apple Pay account or your Google Pay account. All of these things, people are, people feel that like there's some way different to your, your genetics or to mm -hmm. your DNA or to anything else. If you look at the numbers of people that have actually signed up for a DNA test, for health reasons, for yeah. ancestry reports, to try and understand who they are better. If we think about this as well, even in this, the most simple version, we're creating a bit of a, a digital record of who <laughs> we are, of what we are, of, of every single one of us as an individual, as somebody different, as somebody that, that is unique in every way possible in the sense of, I think, I don't know the exact numbers, but I did do some research, but I think for DNA, it's only a very small 0.1% or something like that, that really yeah. changes who that person is. The rest of it though, we are also actually all just one human being race, as it were. We all are the same. We should all be looking at ways to, to work together. Mm -hmm. And I think if we can find ways whereby our humanity, our essence of who we are and our genetics play a part in that and help yeah. bring us together, I think that's a huge potential. And again, let's not go too sci-fi or too black mirror, but being verified based on your DNA in the future, is that so hard to believe? If we had told our parents 20 years ago that we were going to use our face to approve yeah. payments from our credit cards, they would have laughed at you whilst they were sending a fax. Like it just- Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's unstoppable, right? Technology is getting there and at some point we will need to advance what we have right now, which is know your customer. You need to provide some sort of inf information as you provide information to your bank and to your, to your electric company. You are ready to, we're just advancing technology. And we are not doing it as a human. Right now, we have no other species living with us, for example, right? I, I mean, you never know. I'm seeing how the world, it's going maybe one day, the, the aliens is going to come down. We will need to distinguish each other from them. That's more like sci-fi, but... With, with everything we've yeah. seen happen in the world in the last three years, don't wish it on too soon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not don't jinx it. Stop it there, right? It, what, it, what it seems to be sci-fi is more like a decentralized science and finance. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and everything is getting there. So uh, probably you are aware of the theory of the digital thing, right? Like uh, how each of us has one digital twin on the internet. It's just built based on the preferences, on the clicks, on on, on, on the, the, the web pages that he visit or she visit. What about as we are trying to do in the universe? We right now we are an NFT collection customized with with DNA, and then you visually you can represent this and use it as in a business model. But what about what we're trying to do, which is evolving this concept beyond the avatars. We call it bio avatars because we're trying to build yourself in the metaverse and, and people will be able to see you, to see yourself. Not only it's okay, this person has been in the universe, has done a DNA, something. this is how it looks, but the look and feel is, is what, I, what I'm talking. We're talking about meta pages and pages of data of one zeros uh, or ABCDs in, in the DNA. We're talking about, oh, this is Chris. It looks like this is his 
pink and it's wearing something because his DNA says that it's like this, right? This is this is our, our vision and, and how we are trying to geneticize the, the, the metaverse and the avatar. What do you think about this? So I think it's always good that people can get a visualization on mm -hmm. who they actually are. But I think more importantly, we're bringing into this, we'll bring into play for a new category, I think, in this sense for digital assets. But mm -hmm. we're bringing into play actually something that's much bigger. Your DNA unlocks a huge amount of information into who you are, where you're from, the ancestry side of it. But it also can show up markers for health, for fitness, for nutrition. There's a huge amount of data that goes into that. Today, there are hundreds of companies that are offering various different ways of using your DNA and giving you the personalized vegan diet report. That's right. a real one. I, I know right. one of the founders. Um, then there's, there's for the ancestry, there's for just purely health, there's for a bit mm -hmm. of everything. There's a lot of this going on and it's a huge amount of info and a wealth of insight that you could get. Now, being able to visualize that, but also be able to have something that takes you a little bit further than okay, fine, that's nice, I've got a picture, let's call it. And I think this is the biggest key differentiator for lots of people that aren't in the NFT space and anyone who is in the NFT space has this argument a lot. When mm -hmm. somebody says to them, you know, what if I right click and save, now I've got your DNA, you don't. It's okay though, it's fine. You can take mm -hmm. a copy of it if you want. But I think it's actually the implications of what that means. So all of a sudden we are coming into it and we're bringing part of a community of people who are mm -hmm. like-minded. So you're already finding your own tribe, your own niche within mm. that purchase in the first place. You're secondly getting involved in a network of people that actually everyone's feeling in the same kind of category of, oh, I've just found out actually I've got this trait or I've got that trait and suddenly yeah. we've got things in common. A lot of the successful projects aren't successful because suddenly the prices went up overnight. They became successful because like-minded people came together started mm -hmm. to enjoy what that meant and what they could do together. And again, if we look at things like Yuga Labs or whatever, what they're currently doing is so far removed from where they started that we don't even know where this goes. And I think that's the key element to this. Mm -hmm. Will this DNA art actually allow me to verify myself for my bank account with HSBC in the next two years? No, it's never going to. They're not going to be okay with that. But actually, in 20 years time, is there a way that this is the first step on that mm. path to getting to a sci-fi world where actually I do want to be verified. I do want to make sure that everyone knows when I log in to whatever system it is that I'm logging into, this is me, only me, that it could be verified as me. That's a huge step in the future. Again, we're getting a bit Black Mirror and a bit sci-fi. Yeah. But this is the, the, the point about this. The roadmap is, is going down the line. This is not like tomorrow in, in a year. We're talking about years, years down the line, it's going to be it's going to be like this. I think our, our evolution as human beings, right? We are talking maybe now more philosophically, but uh, we are going to get into a point of maybe we need to find ourselves again. We, we don't know where we are. We don't know who we are. And, and because the, human, the transhumanism is going to be really strong. This is a, a, a current movement that is gaining adoption and everybody's trying to join in this sort of will, right? It's, a, it's like the intersection between machines, AI, technology and humans. Like the, I think that the lines are going to get blurred and we need some sort of verification. We need some sort of, I, I want to see three different avatar, but some, somebody stands out because I know this person, I know he's wearing this in the real life and he's friendly or, or has some sort of trait that you can see in the avatar. This is where we go and this is what we're trying to do in the universe. Some, something like this. This is exactly our mission and our vision. But uh, at the same time, short term, the space is evolving so quick that those jumping in early in projects like, for example, the university need to feel rewarded, feel, need to feel part of the community. And, and as you say, we are doing an NFT collection because I think this is the right way to start. We need to give a head start of those jumping in uh, and, and investing a sum of, of an amount of money and in a project that they have a really long-term journey afterwards. Yeah, but absolutely. I, I think this is uh, this is uh, something that it, it may sound crazy, but uh, but uh, providing this value now and giving the vision years ahead of what's coming, I think this is key. I don't know if you if you invested in Amazon 25, 30 years ago, I'm not, not Amazon, but maybe Apple uh, or Amazon more like 2000, 2005, you will be almost a millionaire right now. Some people saw it coming, some people you read on the news like, okay, the internet, the email, why don't you send a fax? Why don't you say a letter? Yeah, those people probably didn't jump in the background and now <laughs> that's great, right? 
So this is the same thing. And, uh, and the speed, the, 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 you know, the pace that we are gaining, the momentum is just getting so big that either you jump in right now, you are sort of patient, you enjoy the benefits of the community, you add value, you receive value, and slowly you build the tribe, you join the tribe. As we are trying to do is to combine different groups, to give them some rewards, to do like a real life event, some, some sort of benefits for those people that jump in earlier. On the laser, have fun, laser side, but also on the utility. We're giving report, health, well-being, a behavioral, behavioral consultancy. We're providing all these things behind, behind the curtain, right? This is all planned in, in our uh, white paper and, and this is the project that we're building up. So now maybe uh, one of the last questions that I have for you, because we're talking about decentralized finance, we're talking about science, we're talking about aliens, we're talking about so many things. <laughs> but maybe from your expertise, from a marketing standpoint, right? What do you think right now in, in our category or, or field in decentralized science or, or any other? What is the most challenging aspect of launching a, a collection for the NFT space right now? What do you think is it's the, it's the wall that we have to face down right now? I think the, the hardest stage right now for any project is standing out. And this is a big problem, right? If you had launched a project a year ago, you were one of 10 projects maybe that were going to happen in the space of mm -hmm. a week, yeah. two weeks. Today, there's dozens of projects launching every single day on various different networks. And to be honest with you, a lot of them are absolutely shockingly bad. They're copies of copies that are just, they're not going very far. So there's a big issue in terms of actually standing out. And I think mm -hmm. people confuse right now when it comes to those early stages, people confuse lots of noise with finding the right people. Because especially when you're talking about a project like yourselves, this is something that is long term, right? The real benefits to this community might be a year from now. It might be 18 months from now. It could be 20 years from now. It could change the world. The thing is, though, right now, it's not it's very easy, sorry, to sell out a project that people think is going to double in value tomorrow. So mm -hmm. it means that you bring a load of speculators in. And what happens is a load of speculators buy it, sell it. And if you find the next group of people that then come in and you keep that hype going and then they buy it. So now some one group's made money, the second group's made money, the third group's made money, but it doesn't actually build anything. And the real yeah. versions of this and the ones that we've seen that we really admire are the ones that are actually building a community. They built real people. They brought them together. They're in the process of creating something. They communicate well. It's something that comes up now as being called doxing. If you had talked about this two years ago, three years ago, it wasn't doxing the, the team or anything else. It was a case of we had to actually show you who was behind yeah. it because yeah. the people that weren't showing it were running off with your money. Yeah. <laughs> so it's one of those are, I mean, this is my favorite. This is your face. We are a real company. We have yeah. built up companies. We are founded. We have some problems. We have some solutions like everybody else. But here we are, right? This is the key. Yeah. Like, you know who you are. But no company is perfect, right, either. Let's not pretend. No company, no government, no organization, no charity, no no one. Nothing is perfect in life. But I think the key part of it is that when everyone's doing this pseudo-anonymous crap and then just pumping out rubbish, and mm -hmm. then people are reading about how many people have been burned and stuck with things yeah. and everything else. And by the way, it's no different to the real world in fiat currency. Exactly. I receive text messages that tell me, ooh, you owe money, or you should click here, yeah. or your yeah. parcel is ready for re-delivery, or it's constantly trying to steal your money. There's somebody out there for everything trying to steal your money. So I think it's a case of finding a way in the projects nowadays to find a real core audience, to build that real initial stepping stone yeah. that gets you to the next stepping stone. Everybody wants to be the next Board Ape Yacht Club, and they're forgetting that you can't be the next Board Ape Yacht Club That's without over, right? starting yeah. where Board Ape Yacht Club started. And it's small and it's slow and you build up and then people find out and then more people go buy in and then someone big buys in because they like it or whatever and you have that kind of natural progression yeah and i think that's something that everyone wants to skip a through y and they want to just get to z and you're like that you can't do it because also any project that suddenly ramps up and that gets really popular overnight and then suddenly does it we've seen this in icos we've seen it in DeFi, we've seen yeah. it in various token sales since the hype and the noise goes great and then invariably there's no way to sustain that valuation so Absolutely. as the value keeps dropping, people get upset, people get annoyed. Now they feel like they've been burnt. And then suddenly you're burning your own community. 
So starting off nice and small with the right people, yeah. getting those initial OGs, as they're called nowadays in there. See, I'm cool. I'm down with the NFT kids. But getting those OGs in that beginning stage and making sure that they feel valued and that they're part of the real journey, that's worth having 10,000 fake followers or 10,000 people that are speculating on your NFT collection. It helps in every way further yeah. down the line. Absolutely. This is the gradual process, right? We are building a community. We're building a company. I, I don't like to call it project. This is not an NFT project. This is a company. We are self-funded. We are here. We are real people. We have our LinkedIn, our Twitter, which by the way, you will find around afterwards. But so you, you can actually call me almost. We are here building something real. You are putting your face, you're putting your, your contacts. And this is nothing that you're going to run away with your yes, because I want to do some quick facts, right? Obviously, there are projects there, like there are companies out there. There are, as you say, there are schemes everywhere. And when you hit online, do your own research. This is not, this is like bluntly. You are just saying this seriously. You're, you should really research what, you, what you're putting your money at. At least you're gambling your money away, which is, by the way, it's also respectable. If you want to do that, it's, it's fine. But if you try to jump in serious companies like this one, you need to be aware of what we are trying to build and it takes time it takes time you you just jump the community enjoy get value add value you will be rewarded for being there but as you you need to be aware of okay guys this is this is difficult not only because of the project and the company is getting built up with your support it's because also the the noise out there is so much that you need to cut through this you need the time to put the message across right and you need to convey what you are doing you need to convey your vision and only okay this is you get a you get one tomorrow you get two no it's about your vision it's about the benefit the return of investment as well but also see the people behind see the world behind and and, and i think it's key to show your face it's key to be transparent it's key to be growing the community and and be there with them just listen to them we don't like this we would like to people uh, i think this direction is not the right one and, that, and it's actually why the, the DAOs are so important right? the community is deciding the direction of the company. I don't know whether a full DAO or a participate that can influence the company somehow and not take full control because also that's quite dangerous, right? You're building a company and then suddenly you give it away and then the direction gets gets messed up. Not, not everybody understands the vision. And I, th I think a combination of everything is quite important. So I, I agree with you. I think the, the challenges are out there. Projects are out there. Not all of them will survive. We probably, I, I, I have the hope and we're putting the hard work behind to be one of them. We are here for the long run and uh, yeah, we are welcoming everybody to, to join us and, and, and see what we're doing and join our Discord, Twitter and everything. And, and we're here. Ask, ask away. So uh, uh, by, by yeah. the way, that, that's the beauty of this as well. This is the first time in history that as new companies are starting mm -hmm. and as new companies try and do something that has never done before, you literally can talk to them almost on a day yeah. by day, minute by minute basis in something like a Discord server. Yeah. This has never been, imagine Henry Ford at the time when he was suddenly yeah. coming up exactly. with this idea, being able to have this interaction with hundreds of people around the world saying, yeah. hang on a second, mate, I've got horses. What are you doing? This is crazy. We can actually do that today. So for anybody who is looking at your project or at any project in the NFT space, ask mm. the questions. Ask the yes. hard questions, by the way. Yeah. Any project that isn't doing something that's weird, want, wrong, wonderful on the side or anything else will have no issues answering these questions. And I think that's a big part of this. Yeah. Like you said, do your own research. It's very hard to research every project. And if you start sat there and just looked at the new ones that were launched today, you mm. still wouldn't be able to spend all day to look through all of them. But when a project sits well with you and you have a look at that, go into yeah. the Discord, talk, find the real find people out, right? are actually behind it. Yeah and make sure that makes sense to you and that you understand what they're trying to do and that you actually believe in it. Because if you do that, it's not an investment of, oh, I didn't manage to double my money the next morning. It's an investment of, oh my God, in six months, in a year, in 18 months, what will this look like? Exactly. People need to remember, CryptoPunks, Board Ape Yacht Clubs did not launch three months ago. Exactly. The prices did not happen to 70 ETH in the matter of days or weeks Definitely. or even months. It was years. So again, like this idea that because you read about it recently in Rolling Stone magazine online, that's not what happened. We didn't have behind yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with you. I think we are, we're standing on the same position, both of us. Chris, this conversation could last hours, but suddenly <laughs> we have been reaching out the, the today's episode. I don't know, you really want to say something. I think I, I will leave you the, the floor and just add something you want, whatever it is. Uh, 
Not at all. Like, first and foremost, thank you so much for having me on today. I've really enjoyed it. For everybody, do check out DNAverse. I think it's a really interesting project, and I think it definitely stands out from the crowd as one of the slightly more interesting ones that you'll find today, if I can say that in the nicest possible way. Uh, And if you want to hit me up, you can on uh, Twitter. It's at just Chris Bruno. Or if not, you can find the company at socialink.co. Fantastic. Chris, thanks again for the shout out and for the feedback. It has been great having you here. As he said, you have Chris social media. You will have it down there and give it a give it a call, give it a visit, social ink, yeah, somewhere here, up here. We have a, our our magician uh, Daniel is behind the camera and the production, so he will play it somehow. As I said, give him a follow, contact him, visit social link. He has so much value to add to the community. And as I say, Chris, thanks so much for, for being with us today. From our side, well, please subscribe to the channel and follow. Twitter, LinkedIn, and join our community on Discord. We are there, we are building up something which is truly amazing. We're working hard. We we have a talent team behind of 3D designers, gamers, uh, you, know, you name it. Just go to the website and, and we are happy to answer every question you have uh, on Discord, on Twitter, or on LinkedIn. I hope you enjoyed the content and we provide you some value today. And well, see you in the next one.